Okay, thank you, Kim. So as Kim said, I'm Mark Trey for Samsung Electronics, um, Core Technology Working Group Chair. I'm not going to dwell. I'll give you a whole long-winded intro to the core specification because that's going to be super boring. This is going to be a quick five to ten minutes kind of fundamentals of the underlying architecture just so you're aware of what you guys are building on. So there's lots of topics in this slide deck. I think you guys get hard copies of this, so I'm not going to dwell on what this says. Let's go to the fundamentals quickly. So keep going down. There we go. So the fundamental thing you need to know, it's a RESTful architecture. So OCF, we build on REST. It's basically, it's RESTful. So you have things that expose resources, things that consume resources. The thing that exposes resources is typically referred to as a server. The thing consuming resources typically referred to as a client. So the server exposes, hey, I've got stuff you might care about. And the client goes, cool, I'm discovering it. I'm interacting with it. I'm doing things to you. Things you can do, it's classic RESTful. Um, CRUD in operations, create, retrieve, update, delete, notify. So you have a representation, you consume the representation. So what do the representations look like? Just going down. So first on, on consumption, as I said, everything you've got, the, the Raspberry Pis and all that good stuff, they're all OCF devices. Everything's a device. But they have roles. So it's either a server role or a client role or both. Server role meaning, again, I'm exposing resources I may care about and I'm interacting with. Client role meaning I'm consuming those resources, I'm interacting with you, I'm discovering you, I'm doing stuff to you. So what are they exposing? Again, I keep seeing the word resources. If you've run around any of the ITF core interface stuff or any kind of RESTful APIs, it's the same concept. A resource is a coherent, self-contained chunk of meta information that tells you something. It could be temperature, it could be humidity, it could be binary switch, it could be UV radiation, it could be the operational state of my refrigerator. But it's a piece of information that you talk, it's individually addressable, it has a URI, you can go, give me your temperature. I've got your temperature, awesome. What is it and how can I interact with it? So the resource has properties, potentially more than one. Some um, architectures have resources with single property. Um, Ipso did that, OCF, our resources can have more than one. Like temperature will, tip, temperature for example, will give you units. So you can say, okay, it's 50, 50 watts. 50 watt are they? 50 Kelvin, 50 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit? You need to know. Um, the other thing about resources is there's different ways of accessing them. Don't necessarily worry about that. Um, all resources have a default way of being accessed, and so you don't have to worry about the different flavors you could possibly do. So basic operation, again, is how do I interact with what's there in the framework? I discover stuff. Um, discovery is actually, it's all, it's, it's what we build on, I'll go to the transport binds in a minute, but basically it's multicast, I find things, I go, yeah, yeah, I found you, what do you have? It tells me, I interact with you. So basically you've got the discovering things, then the basic operation of interacting with things, retrieving information, updating information, observing information. So you can go, okay, you've got temperature, that's lovely, I only care when it changes. You can do that, you can sit there quite happy waiting to see if things change over time. You don't have to keep going, have you changed yet, have you changed yet? So it's classic, classic some of the cl and these are classic patterns, observer pattern, there's, there's the stuff if you've done any RESTful, it's pretty familiar patterns. Other things the core provides, just as an FYI, it's not information you really need to know in depth. A um, couple of key points, security is fundamental and there's other speakers who are gonna give you a whole bunch of detail about the security models, so I'm not gonna dwell there. Um, other things that undercovers, there's messaging, how we bind, um, how do I identify things, address things, possible bridging, it's all in the core spec. Again, the fundamental is though it's a RESTful architecture, you interact with the resources in the RESTful architecture. Just how the device is kind of laid out, a sense of the resources you have to have, that device always has. And there's resources that you may have. So all devices have what we call a platform resource, which is basically what am I living on? It could be more than one device on a platform. Think on, yeah, one of these. It's a, it's a phone, but you could argue it's a camera, it's a video player, it's a whatever else. So all things are platforms, that's OICP. Don't worry about the names, some of those names are historic from where the organization came from and has come to. Um, all resources, all devices have a device, that's OICD, and the device tells you what you are. It tells you that it's a light, or it's a switch, or it's a TV, or it's a refrigerator, or there's about, oof. there's a lot of device types predefined right now where you say, if you say I'm a, I'll go for a refrigerator, it's a good one. We know it, we, that means something. It means a certain set of minimum things you do. And then the other key resource, every, the two other resources everything has, introspection, don't worry about it too much, but introspection is basically a way of discovering what you have so you can build smart interfaces. 
and res is resources. It's basically what do I expose? And that's a sea of links telling you, telling you how to get to the things it's got. So I see res, which is auto-populated for you for a lot of things, will tell you I've got humidity, I've got temperature, I've got UV radiation, I've got geolocation sensor, I've got whatever else on, them, on me. So they're all things that devices expose and fairly, it's a fairly standard kind of resource setup. So going down again. The last thing I, wa I want to dwell on, I'm not going to go into, there's loads more slides in here with d deeper diving detail, which is all read at leisure, but you don't, it's not going to help you necessarily. It's just a quick view of the stack. Um, this, the things we write, most of our work is north of co-op. So up, co-op's a transport bind. We are agnostic of the transport. It just happens to be the only one we've defined. So right now, everything's running over co-op. On top of um, DTLS or TLS, typically DTLS, again, on IPv6. And so we do all our transport binding to co-op, so all the crud in operations uh, create is a co-op um, post. A retrieves a co-op get, and all that good stuff. Um, all the encoding on the wire, it's done, and Kishin will probably go into detail maybe a little bit, Everything on the wire is encoded in CBOR, very nice and small. And so the resource models, we define everything by we have JSON schemas and RAML or open API, APIs to define it. So it's all using, it's all the schemas, all the resources we talked about, they're all defined using JSON. And so we can CBOR encode them pretty easily. On top of that, applications live. So that's the basic stack, how it lives. As I said, the OCF piece, everything else is kind of off the shelf. It's standard IPv6, standard DTLS, standard co-op. So and standard CBOR encoding, but the, where we put our flavors in is the resource model and how we interact with that and how we define discovery for that. So that's all I really wanted to cover because the slides got more detail, but just as initial set of pieces. Um, next speaker up will be Kishan, who's gonna go into the iativity realization of this and some of the details you need to know about the actual open source stack that's out there. Okay, thank you all for your time.